Let's talk about suicide. Well, actually, let's talk about why we don't talk about suicide. 464,000 people die annually because of homicide. Twice the amount of people die because of suicide each year. Twice. Meaning, roughly 800,000 people lose their lives every single year because of suicide. And countless more try to attempt or have thoughts of ending their lives. But why aren't we talking about this? Why are we so silent about someone dying every 40 seconds because of suicide? Why aren't we considering the fact that we're almost twice as more likely to lose our friends by suicide than murder? Let's not sugarcoat the fact that mental health is engulfed in stigma. Depression, anxiety, or any sort of negative emotion that strays away from the illusion of being buoyant in life is considered a taboo that should be locked and hidden away from public view. Society teaches us that suffering in silence is what makes us strong. Yet asking for support or exposing any vulnerable feelings you might have will lead you to getting scorned and labeled as weak, overdramatic, pathetic. No wonder why it's unimaginably hard for someone who feels suicidal to open up about their hardships in life. Because you feel like you're going to be constantly judged for everything you're facing. Now, I'm not here to give an inspirational speech. I'm here to give you the truth about suicide. Because we've been tiptoeing around this important topic for way too long. And staying silent for any longer will cost lives. The scary thing is, anyone can be suicidal. You can be 15 or 50 unemployed or a millionaire, look visibly depressed or have your full life put together. You can be from any race, any gender, and from any part of the world and still lack the will to live. Suicide doesn't have a face and neither does it have a sole cause. It's a common misconception that someone has to be depressed to be suicidal. Yes, having depression can give rise to suicidal thoughts, especially since it blinds you with anguish and drowns you in despair. But there are other factors we should take into account. For example, there's a strong correlation between experiencing traumatic stress such as being a domestic abuse survivor or carrying war trauma and increased risk of suicide. On the other hand, patients that suffer from chronic illnesses or pain often feel suicidal because they feel like there's no control over the suffering in their life. And they have no way to end the pain in their lives. And some people might generally just view themselves as burdens, or they may be experiencing crippling loneliness. Not everyone can understand nor empathize with these reasonings, but they are valid nonetheless and should be taken fully seriously. Now, I've been here talking for a while. So let me ask you guys a question. 
how often do you talk about suicide? Yeah, see, not that much. So let's talk about suicide. Let's talk about how people are suffering out there. Let's talk about the ways we can support them. Let's talk to them about how we're here to support them. Let's talk about our feelings. I genuinely believe by being more open about mental health, we can reduce the suicide rate. Even if it's by the slightest bit, yes, you may be hesitant at first because it is a complex topic. So let's start here. I want you guys to repeat after me because if we all participate, it can encourage everyone to help end the stigma. So please repeat after me. Let's talk about suicide. Let's talk about suicide. See, we can do it. Together, we can inspire and encourage each other to make a societal taboo be seen in a more empathetic light. Juliette Lewis once said that the bravest thing she's ever done in her life is to continue to live when she wanted to die. And I think the second most bravest thing you can ever do in life is to speak about the unspoken. Thank you for being such a great audience.